Welcome to the Rocking Horse Dreams. Today we are going to take a look at Clans, a game for 2-4 to four players that should take about 30 minutes, designed by Leo Colavini, with art by Graphic Studio Kruger, and published by Winning Moves and Real Grand Games. Inside the box you get an instruction booklet, a relatively large board split into 12 regions, each containing 5 territories. Regions are bordered by rivers. 12 huts and 1 scoring marker in each of the 5 clan colors, 12 village chips, and 5 clan cards. To set up the game, the instructions recommend placing one of each color in each of the 12 regions and then randomly distributing the huts to the 5 territories. Shuffle the 5 clan cards and deal one to each player face down, discarding the remaining back to the box without looking at them. The cards will tell each player which color they will be playing as and should be kept secret. Next, place the village chips on the 12 spaces on the epoch chart on the right side of the board. Let's take a closer look at that. The epoch chart is broken into five epochs, four of five of which have a positive and negative scoring effect on villages formed in the epoch. The first epoch, which is the first four villages formed, scores one additional point if formed in the forest and doesn't score at all if formed in the mountains. The second epoch scores an additional two points for villages formed in the mountains and none for ones formed in the plains. The third scores an additional three points for villages formed in the steppe, or wheat field as we call it, and none for the forest. The fourth scores an additional four points for villages formed in the plains, and none for the steppe. The fifth epoch scores five points, no matter which territory it is formed in. Finally, place the score markers below the one on the score track, and play is ready to begin. On a player's turn, they may do one thing. Move a hut or group of huts into an adjacent territory that is also occupied by a hut or group of huts. A move can never be made into an unoccupied territory. Territories separated by rivers are considered adjacent, but ones separated by lakes are not. Also, when a group of huts reaches seven, it can no longer move unless it is next to another group of seven huts, and both are surrounded by unoccupied territories, then a player may move one group into the other. A village is formed when a group of huts is surrounded by unoccupied territories. When this happened, the player who caused it takes the topmost village chip from the epoch chart, and that comes into play as endgame scoring. The village then scores. If on a player's turn they form two villages or more, they determine the scoring order, and will take one chip per village. Let's go a little further into how the villages score. The value of the village is the number of huts in the village, plus any epoch bonuses. Each color present then scores the full value no matter how many huts they have present. This village scores in Epoch 1, which gives a bonus 1 point to villages formed on forests. The player who formed the village takes the chip and then scores the village. Red, yellow, blue, and green will score 1 point for each hut present, plus the Epoch bonus of 1, so each of these colors will score 7. When forming villages, the clans remain peaceful unless all 5 clans are present. In that case, any clan which has only one hut in the village is eliminated from the village before scoring. In this village, there are six huts, but all five clans are present, so the clans with only one hut present are kicked out, leaving two huts, plus the Epoch 1 bonus for forming a village in a forest, so red scores three points. If a village is formed on the negative territory of the current Epoch, it doesn't score at all, but the player who formed the village still gets the village chip. Play continues like this, players taking it in turn moving huts into adjacent occupied territories and forming villages, until either all 12 village chips are taken, in which case the last village formed will score a bonus 5 points regardless of the territory, or there are no more legal moves, in which case the remaining village chips are left unclaimed. At this point, players will reveal their clan cards and move their clan's score marker one space for every village chip in their possession, and the player whose clan score marker is highest on the score track wins. And that is Clans. It's a fun little game with some bluffing and screw your neighbor, which is pretty unexpected in what boils down to be an abstract game. It lasts the perfect amount of time and can be played by just about everyone. I give it an 8 out of 10.